Howdy, gang. So I'm back to talk about um, summarize uh, my experiences with modeling devices that I've been talking about on and off for the last couple of years. I have tried, I think, most of them, all of them, maybe. Anyway, I've also learned some things in between um, reviewing them here on YouTube. And I want to update some of my thoughts and some of the things I've learned, pass them along to you so you can make your best informed decision. These devices are, you know, relatively inexpensive um, when you consider what they're replacing on a larger pedal board, but still are hard earned money, right? Right. So, so let's backtrack a little bit. Um, so one of the devices I got involved with very early are the Zoom devices. And what I love about the Zoom devices, starting with the uh, single footprint MS50G and MS70CDR, is you can have up to six effects at once in those devices. You can also do modeling which is great, you can have your amp sounds. Um, now, the only limitation is CPU. For instance, if you go use the, I think it's the tube tape, tape echo or the tube echo drive, I think it's called, that uses a ton of CPU. So you're only gonna be able to get two other um, presets in your patch, two other uh, elements in your patch other than that. And those will probably have to be of the lower CPU usage themselves. But for the most part, that's one of the few effects. Uh, maybe there's a couple of reverbs that use a lot of CPU naturally, but those are, you know, that's just one or two of the few effects that will eat up a lot of CPU in those units. And you'll be able to get, I mean, very often I've got six running. Of, of most of my patches in those units. I love them. They're small, one footprint, relatively inexpensive, especially used. Um, although the prices have gone up from when I first got into them. I mean, you could pick one up for 60, 70 bucks. Now it's like 100, 110, but still a good deal. And there's a Zoom. There's two apps you uh, for those devices that you can add effects or subtract effects up until the limit of the unit. Um, that's the Zoom Effect Manager. And then they have a Zoom uh, app to help you arrange things. But there is another free app that you can get on the web that some crazy nut created. It's completely free. He updates it regularly where you can do your entire pedal preset range up to, I don't know, I've done 25, I think you can do 50 or more in this app. It's, a, it's incredible. So that app is called Tone Lib. It's free. It's amazing. It's amazing. It lets you set up everything in order by preset, you can back it up. You can back it up to multiple computers. I mean, it's just the most incredible thing ever, Tone Lib. So highly recommend it. But then that moved me on to the GX3 series, um, the one with and without the expression pedal. Loved that too. Also can be used in Tone Lib to create your presets. To me, it's so much easier when you have an app to do things. I'm sure a lot of you agree. Um, some people like the tactile, uh, you know, way to do it. That's fine too. But I like the app at this point. I like plugging it in, looking at my screen, doing it, arranging it, done. So. And then I went all the way up to the GX11, which I think is the latest incarnation. Now, the thing about the Zoom, the effects are great. The effects that they say, you know, people talk about online, oh, this will replace a Strymon and this will replace it. Eh, close. Is it worth it for the price? Yes, in my opinion, because you're getting so much 
more with it, right? You're getting hundreds of effects that you can use and string together. Depending on your unit, it can be six effects in a row, like the MS series or the GX series, but it goes up to seven, nine, 11, like the GX 11. It's amazing. Um, I don't use the effects like I would a Strymon. Um, sure, there's a couple of times in the reverbs where I've tried to cop, uh, you know, an even tied space. Um, but, and here's the, the plus, sometimes I go beyond what I can do in the even tied space in the settings. The one thing I would recommend in the Zoom products is dig deeply, put set aside some time to dig deep and go through all the little minutia that can be changed to make your sound. Again, is it going to be 100% of a Strymon or an even tide or whatever? No, but it's going to be 80 to 90%. That's my experience, okay? If you do put in the time, um, which is great. I've got a, a low, I have another video, hopefully you, you'll take a look at it, where I do some of my favorite presets on the MS series. And I did a very credible lo-fi loop junkie, like extremely credible, and in fact, made it better in my opinion because I was able to cut back a little on the compression and still get the lo-fi. Um, I just thought it cut through the mix a little better. It wasn't as thick. I've also created a Chase Bliss Therme patch and a whole bunch of other stuff. So if you want to check out that video, you'll see some of my favorites from, you know, uh, a seek filter, sequence filter to a lot of stuff. Um, I love that stuff. So are the amps going to be a Fender or a Vox or a Marshall? No. This is the one caveat, and I've said this before. Unlike Line 6, um, Moore, Headrush, they're not going to be out of the box what you expect. They'll be close, they'll be in the range, but with Zoom more than any other products, I wasn't as concerned with, oh my God, this isn't a Marshall or this isn't a Fender. I just dialed in, I started with that, but then dialed in what I wanted. So. Again, I still feel that way about the Zoom amps, although now with some of the higher end Zooms, you can import your favorite IRs, like some of the competitors, and that certainly makes a huge difference. But don't get hung up on, oh, is this a Fender, a Marshall, a Vox, a Matchless. The starting blocks are there, but import your own IRs, do a lot of tweaking, do a lot of tweaking. They're, they're a tweak meister's paradise, but it's worth it. So let's move on to line six. Line six is an amazing company. I mean, yes, I know those guys really well. I consider them friends, but, you know, I admire their work because why? Well, first of all, they're constantly updating their products, constantly. They're listening to their consumers they're making changes, they're making firmware updates, they're making their products better. In a lot of cases, like, I think it was the HX Stomp, it went from six slots to seven within the first year that you could do. And then they were talking about even more. The HX FX was a brilliant uh, upgrade from the MX9, was it the MX9? You know what I'm talking, the M9 because I had an M9 for years before I ever met those guys. I loved that thing. Um, never should have sold it. But um, the HX Effects was a great upgrade from that. And then, you know, the, 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 the whole flagship realm of, um, you know, we're talking about the Helix, the Helix Lite, the Helix Super, whatever they've got now. I love their products, mainly because I grew up in this business, you know, this is a disclaimer, I grew up using a lot of their individual effects, but after 30 years, I still love those effects. 
I love the delays. I love some of their other, uh, you know, some of the modulation effects. The M5 is a go-to single pedal thing for me. Love it, love it, love it. You know, now, the other thing I love is the app. Again, I can go into the app and do whatever I bloody well please to get precisely what I want. Keep playing and tweaking and playing. I don't care how long it takes. I care that my sound is precisely what I want. So I adore the Line 6 products for their app. It's one of the better apps. Yes, you have IR loading. I'll say this about um, Line 6, though. Their bass, amp, and cab combinations are really excellent. And I told them this once. I said, you know... I've tried to beat some of your combinations um, on my own, and I really wasn't able to do much better. It was different, but I don't think it was better. And they said, well, we really take a lot of time to combine those elements to make them be the best for what that is, whether it's a matchless or, you know, a Marshall or a Fender. And they really do. It really, really does. I have to commend them. They're, they're out of the box, open it up, tweak it, put it in, is the best in the industry without having to do too much. Now, yes, you can tweak the living hell out of them. Um, and you can import IRs. There have been a few things for Line 6 I've improved on with some IRs, but honestly, not many. I tend to go back to their stuff. And again, maybe it's just because they've tuned it that way because it works well, but it works. Use your EQ judiciously. Use your compression judici judiciously. <laughs> um, figure out whether you want the compression before or after the cab. Some people espouse doing it after, and that is a sound. Um, I've tried it both ways. Try using the simple EQ where it's a cut below 600 and a boost above 600 by just 2 dB each with the crossover at 6. That's very effective too without getting all tweaky. You use like I've done it. I've done it. I've gone through and tweaked the living hell out of everything. And sometimes that split at 600 just does it. Um, there's a lot of videos out about that as well. Um, so I would play with those options, the compression before and after the cab. Um, use parallel, like the fact that Line 6 was one of the first to include this, to have parallel. You can have wet-dry, right? If you're using two amps, you can have wet-dry amazing that you can split those and you know have your have your drives fuzzes whatever and then your 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 delays your modulation and your reverbs amazing amazing out of the box the best fender sound i've gotten like boom right out of the box minimal tweaking is line six some of the high gain stuff the matchless is amazing some of the higher gain stuff is really great right out of the box. The Fender, though, it's the best. The Vox is very, very good. But as I've stated before in another video, I feel that more is, uh, has one leg up on everybody else in the industry with their Vox sound. Because I play through a Vox regularly with my lap steel. When I play guitar, I usually use a uh, Fender, but lap steel, I use a Vox, and boom, Moore has it. Like, I mean, I was really astonished. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. But so I would consider, you know, the HX Stomp is really small. Yes, it's a little bit more expensive than some of its competitors, but I just feel that the quality and the app and everything else they're giving you in there is well worth it. Um, I should also mention that there's a company called Disaster Area Designs that's um, owned by my friend Matthew Farrow, who also owns uh, Alexander Pedals. 
and he creates uh, switches, some really small, like the micro. Let me see if that makes sense. The micro is like about that big. Um, that can control the HX Stomp. It can also control zoom pedals, the MS50G and the MS70CDR. Uh, the, uh, the zoom pedals it controls through a USB ghost cable that he sells. Amazing. Ch that's life changing, by the way, I should mention, to, have, to be able to change presets on the zooms without, you know, hearing it. You know, and just going boom, 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 without having to reach down or being stuck with one thing. That's one of the drawbacks of those. So anyway, but Disaster Area Designs makes very small to bigger to bigger switchers that will also improve your capabilities on the Line 6, the Zoom, the Head Rush, the more all of them, so that's something to consider, especially for the smaller ones like the zoom, uh, zooms and the, you know, the, I guess the HX stomps about that big. So that's still pretty small. So to add a switcher that can do crazy capabilities into it, and then you might also want to add a um, expression pedal for volume and wah, it's still small enough that you can do that but the quality is amazing. The only thing I don't like, eh, it's not that I don't like it, but my least favorite thing about the uh, Line 6 Helix, whether it's HX Stomp to the Helix to the HX FX, is their reverbs. I don't hate them. I like the particle verb. I like the, um, uh, the plateau. With when, if I turn the uh, octave effects off, it's a nice plate effect. It's not my favorite. Um, the particle verb, crazy. I love that. And the, um, the there's another one that's really weird that I like. But in general, I've got better reverbs. But every other thing in the Line 6 product line, I love. And again, the app. So, which moves me on to more. So, I bought the more... Uh, what is it, the 300? Um, yes, the most amazing Vox sound I've ever gotten. The other thing the Moore has that's a great advantage is it's got a synthesizer built into it, which um, the HX Stomp doesn't. I mean, it does have synthesis, um, pl you know, plugins, uh, options, but it, this has like a real synthesizer a uh, module built in that's incredible that you can tweak and do so many things with. Very, very impressive. Like the HX Stomp and like the higher end Zoom products, the GX11 and the um, Head Rush, they have effects loop. One thing I'll say about the effects loop though, the effects loop broke on me the first week on the Moore. The reason is, and it might be true of all of them, but this was very fragile because I do it all the time. I have my pedal board on the floor. Put some cables in. Within one week, it failed because that effects loop is soldered right onto the circuit board and not super solid, well supported. It's just right there, loose, like jacked into there. There's no other um, brace to keep it from moving. And it moved and it cracked the circuit board. And to send it back to more, it would have been like, I don't know, half the cost of the board and no one else could really fix it. I finally got someone to fix it for me, a good friend of mine who's a tech even then it wasn't cheap, something to consider. But it's built solid other way. I mean, it's a metal, solid metal thing and the, the, the treadle on the, uh, the expression volume is great. That's a good size. I loved all of the effects, believe it or not, all of the effects in the more impressed the living hell out of me. 
I was able to get a good Marshall sound. I was able to get a good Fender sound, like a really good Fender sound, not quite as good as the Line 6, but pretty bleeping close. But again, the Vox sound just blew me away. The synthesizer, the app, they have an app. Yes, it's not as sophisticated as the Line 6 app, which what is, but pretty good and you could back up and restore and you could change your um your your board your 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 your, <laughs> your signal path blah, 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 um pretty easily not as simple as line six and not as effective and it's a little wonky but you can do it the amps and cabs are all uniformly great you can import irs again i had mixed results with kind of combining the IRs with their amps. It was okay, but I was so impressed by the, line, by the uh, Vox that I pretty much went with that. Um, the routing I was happy with, really, really great solid device, but ultimately I sold it because of that reliability issue. Um, once I had it professionally fixed, I kept it for a few more months to finish the project I was in the middle of. And I was like, OK, yeah, I can't I can't deal with this. You know, um, I made sure I insured it to the person I sent it to so they would have at least 30 days to not get stuck with it like I did. I'm not even sure that it wasn't messed up when I bought it from the person I messed it up with. So I wasn't going to do that to somebody else. Um, but it was professionally repaired. It was like a real serious tech here in Nashville. And he told me it was solid. So that that was the main reason for getting rid of it. Also, other than the Vox, the rest of the like what I'm getting at is like so with line six, I could get a decent Vox, not as good as the more. But then everything else I was happy with, which leads me to. Head rush. I recently, as you see, I, uh, one of my recent videos, I picked up a Head Rush MX-5. I love the damn thing. Um, there's no app, no app, but there is a touch screen, um, a large, you know, digital touch screen that's kind of large enough, not large, large, but you know, four inches or something, large enough that you can deal with it without getting frustrated, and. It has 11 slots as opposed to seven or less of other devices. That was really attractive. Um, of course, you can run out of CPU. So, you know, something to consider just like any device. But I'm using all 11 slots uh, from my favorite and it's working great. I think I ended up with a matchless style with and nothing made sense, a very clean match list, but nothing made sense until I imported um, my own IR. It was a Celestian um, Vintage 30 uh, with a Royer 121 and a 57. Uh, I think I chose the low gain option on that IR because I was having a really, really, really hard time getting low gain amp sound out of it. I could get mid, I could get high gain up the wazoo. The presets are there. Like you will get your high gain out of this unit, which is odd because some people remarked on my video, oh, most people say it's the low gain that's easy to get in the high gain. I had the exact opposite. I always play low to mid gain. If I want high gain, I'm kicking on a fuzz or something else. Um, so I can control it more, at least for modeling and a real amp, it's not such a big deal. But um, yeah, it was really odd that people were like, oh, most people say it's the low gain that's easy to get. No, I spent hours trying to get a low gain sound with some heft. And what I mean by heft is the EQ balance and just enough grit like just edge of breakup, whatever, and still get a lot of clarity. And it wasn't until I kept messing around and messing around and literally took three hours, I think, total. 
And then I finally imported my IR, but I had to go through a multitude of my, and I've got hundreds of IRs. Boom, I hit the one, played, and I was like, okay, that's it. And then I put on, um, you know, their, their low gain um, overdrive, a very, very light compression, and a whole bunch of other really cool stuff. Uh, the tape delay for a little slap, um, two reverbs. One thing I will recommend is, well, I have two recommendations that are very important to this uh, device, the Headrush MX-5. The first one is, if you're going to use the loop, put it in your chain first. Like if you're starting with a raw chain, put it in first. Because I don't know why, but I've had a lot of trouble. If I found like a chain that I thought, oh yeah, I can work with that and I'll just tweak it and then went to put it in later or towards the end, I don't know, couldn't do it. But if I started with a blank slate, put the loop, the effects loop in first, then the amp, then the cab, and then populated it before and after the amp cab and loop, it was fine. So that's my first recommendation for the Headrush MX-5. The second is when you go, and this thank you to people who mentioned this on my last video, when I set up my volume wah, I was having a lot of problems with the volume. Like it seemed like it was nothing, 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 then boom, we were in. And I'm used to a linear taper because so, if I play ambiently, I want, especially when I'm playing lap steel, I want to cut the attack off the top, right? Well, someone mentioned the default is classic. You want to go deeper into it, play around with something. I think you got to do like one, two, and then the third allows you to change uh, to linear. So definitely <laughs> the linear on that uh, treadle for the Headrush MX-5. Also, you know, it's a smaller foot treadle than the Moore and some of the other devices like the Helix, the full-size Helix. So you really want to have your heel to mid on there, I found more than your toe. I just think you get a little more accurate. And this is just from experience using smaller mini expression pedals too in the past. So something to think about, play around with that, see what's more comfortable. For me, going from my heel of my foot to the mid on that gave me an easier draw. Um, and you know, the, uh, the head rush, like I said, it's got, um, to me, it's got amazing uh, high gain out of the box. And I could get some mid gain. I just struggled with lower gain. Let me know what you feel, because I was shocked when people said, oh, no, everybody says it's low gain. Um, <clears throat> the effects are great. The effects are great. <clears throat> the overdrive, yes. Okay, so first of all, there's not as many overdrives or as many, no, there's definitely not as many overdrives, but there's also not as many versatile overdrives as the Line 6. There's not as many fuzzes or versatile fuzzes as the Line 6. I like the reverbs better. The delays are great, but different from the Line 6, but really great and were perfect for what I needed. So kudos to the delays, kudos to the um, reverbs, kudos to the compression that although it's not as, you know, there's only like two compression or three compression choices, the one, the red one is fantastic. And, you know, if you set it lower, so you're not hitting it super hard, it's not as aggressive, fantastic. But again, in line six, there's a lot more choices and the line six compressors have blend options. That's a big plus most of the time for me, but I was able to set it so low, uh, gentle setting of compression that it wasn't messing with the signal too much. I don't want to have too much in there. And if I did have more, I'd want to have it in a blend. So I got to be a little more delicate with it. And it worked great. Sounds great. Compressor sounds really great. I was very impressed with the compressor. All the, the modulation was pretty great. Again, not as many choices as line six. So if you need choices, 
you need to consider all these things. Um, for what I'm using the MX-5 for, I just want my basic things to sound great um, and be workable because I'm running an effects loop to any real specialty boutique -y stuff. But if you want that stuff just in your box, you might want to look elsewhere because you'll have more options, right? There's just more options. But, you know, you also do get 11 effects slots and you can assign them to switches. So, but there's no app. Just to recap, there's no app. But I'm really impressed with the uh, MX-5 so far. I mean, I've been using it for like, I don't know, two months now. Um, and uh, because of my, I use most of my boutique stuff in the effect, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I'm fine with what I've got out of it. But would I prefer a compressor with uh, a blend in it? Hell yeah. Would I, can, would I prefer a compressor like more than two or three choices? Yes. Um, so, you know, I'm not getting rid of my Line 6 stuff anytime soon, but I have options uh, for other things. So um, the more, you know, the funny thing about the more is it also had extra switches right on the front of it. Um, and the line six and the uh, head rush, you know, you're limited uh, kind of to three to four. That's just the nature of the beast. And the price point for all these things vary based on that. Like, why is the head rush MX-5 cheaper than the line six? Well, because you don't have 400 choices of every effect. You do have more slots. The Line 6 probably has better amp choices out of the box. The Zoom is very competitively priced, but you're going to have to work on it a little bit. And the more is great and sounds really good, but, and I'm not going to say it's unreliable just because it was unreliable for me. That was a special thing with the effects loop. And yeah, that's not a great design to have the jacks right on the board, but I did love everything it did. I really did. And there's also, you know, you can buy packs from guys who are peddling these online. And I bought a couple packs, some for the more, some for the line six. They're all great. They're all great. Save you a lot of time. Um, one last device I want to talk about was the Nuex or the Nux um, devices. I have the 300 the smaller one, and then I had the bigger, newer model, which I think is the MS-30. And I got to say that when they make improvements to that sucker, like A, where you can put the effects loop, because when I had it, the effects loop was after the reverb and delay, like all the way at the end of the chain. That was insane. Insane. And when you can change the order of say where your wah is or um, you know some of the other effects that make more sense to you when they change that and a few other details and i i've heard they're starting to import um the cheaper model i have without the effects loop i guess it's 300 it's only you can get it used for like 100 bucks that thing's amazing, too. Um, they're thinking of putting the acoustic modeling from the 30 into that. If you don't need an effects loop, trust me on this. Just because it's cheap does not mean it's not great. I was able to dial up in the MS-30 and the MS-300, if I'm getting the numbers right, um, like that. Like great, great great sounds. The reverbs sound like lexicon reverbs, the delays, the modulations, the amps blew my mind. The amp and cab combinations were fantastic and you can import your own IRs. Unbelievable. Now the, the volume pedal, expression pedal draw on, it sucks. If that's important to you, the Nukes, New X, I'm telling you, it's the worst volume expression pedal I have ever played. It's like, zip. I mean, it's just very short, right? It's not from here 
to here. It starts here and goes there. I mean, you're not even getting 50% of the um, treadle capabilities, in my opinion. Um, I don't know how they fix that. That blew. I had to end up using my own volume pedal, which was fine. I love my volume pedal. So I used to just tape it down, you know, and, and, and so it wouldn't move literally duct taped it down. Um, you know, that kind of sucked because then I didn't have the wah feature available to me there. But honestly, the wah feature was freaking horrible. It was terrible. It was a terrible wall. I'm sure they'll fix it. Don't send hate mail. I'm sure they're going to fix the wall. Um, I'm sure they're going to fix the effects loop placement. And I'm sure they're going to fix a couple other things. But that treadle, I don't see how they're going to fix that. It's built in. It's pretty bad. But honestly, like the, the old, like their morning glory overdrive, model is unreal. un freaking real I mean, everything. You know, and the funny thing is, though their, their wah sucked, their uh, whammy was great. The whammy was great. It was very usable, which is the next in the chain there if, if you cho choose to do so. So, you know, the amps, the cabs, I mean, I was so blown away by the new X, but that treadle, the volume pedal placement, a couple other things just were kind of deal breakers, but it is relatively inexpensive at around 300 new for the, the, the big mama and about $100 used for the, you know, the basic one without the uh, effects loop. I think it's the 300. Um, but new X is really up in the game. It's really up in the game. I mean, I'll be curious to see what they do next. If they can make a better foot treadle and make it so you can move things around. They do have an app and their app is super fantastic, like rivals all of the best and makes it very easy to work with. Very impressive. So that's my summation of the uh, modeling devices that I've played in the last couple of years. Hopefully I didn't forget any. I keep trying stuff all the time. So if there's anything you want me to try, you want me to talk about, maybe I've tried it already, let me know. Thanks for watching, sticking with this. I appreciate it. Peace to everybody.